What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another video and we're back home finally here in the Northeast in New England. Back at it at Boston Billiard. Uh, I was in quarantine, like I quarantined myself for a few days. Today just got the call, COVID free, test was negative and obviously we have to get back on the grind. I'm itching to play. I played I think like seven out of like my last eight days when I was in Houston and Vegas. So obviously, um, you know, getting some withdrawals here. So we're back at it and on all the lists, not sure how it's gonna go, but uh, I love playing six-handed. I'm glad that we are playing six-handed again. So with that said, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you are new or if you enjoyed, I don't know, just leave a like. It's always much appreciated. Uh, drop a comment below, always giving away a free chip package. I hope this win isn't horrible. But with that said, let's get it going. Let's get the session started. Wish us luck. Onto the 1 3 streets we go. First hand in. We are on the big blind with ace 10 off suit. There's a button straddle and the small blind limps. Here, ace 10 off, six handed. Definitely putting in the raise out of position. I raise a 25. We get the button and small blind to make the call. So, three ways in middle position. Flop comes 10, 7, 8, two hearts, and a diamond. Small blind leads out for $25. And here with this donk lead, pretty small donk lead at that. We put in the raise with top top on a very wet board, raise it up to $100. Next, the button gives us some troubling news as she decides to 3-bet jam, but it's a small 3-bet jam to $182. The small blind thinks about it and ends up putting in the call all in for the exact same amount actually. He also had $182 behind in his stack. And now we're just in between a rock and a hard place. Am I ever supposed to fold for only $80 more? There's over $500 in the middle. I'm not good here with just top top. There's just no way, especially on this board, but we just have to call. There's no folding. Uh, maybe we can just hope for some run and runner hearts or something. So I put in the call, hoping for some hearts. The run out comes the nine of diamonds and the queen of diamonds. Button shows us pocket eights for a flopped middle set. The small blind had eight seven for bottom two pair. Nice way to start off the session, getting it all in three ways with the worst hand. Nice hand, Lisa. Next hand with King Jack offsuit in the plus one. Under the gun opens it up to eight dollars. And here I decided to three bet to twenty-five. I've seen him fluctuate with his pre-flop sizings, so probably indicative of a pretty weak hand. Anyways, he makes the call and we're going heads up to a flop. Flop comes Queen 10 6 Rainbow. He leads out for forty dollars, and I am just really never gonna be folding. Um, pretty big bet, once again, donk leading, but uh, just not folding with our open-ended and over card. I make the call, and we're off to a turn. Turn comes the 9 of diamonds, getting there immediately with the nut straight. He now checks. Here, definitely going for value. I throw out a bet of $65. Little did I know, he has very little behind, less than $100. So he thinks about it and puts in the call with $25 behind in the stack. So... Um, yeah, we're just gonna get it all in here on the river. River comes a five. He decides to rip it all in for $25 total. I obviously am not folding with the nuts straight. I show my hand and we're gonna scoop this pot up. Hand after that, we pick up eight, nine of hearts in the small blind and there are two limpers to me. In the small blind, I can go either way with this. Usually probably can just be limping and completing on the small blind, but I decide to raise it up to $20 on this table. It's fairly passive. The Undergun Blimper now puts in the good old limp raise to $55. Folds to me. He has about $200-ish behind. And I'm once again in a pretty terrible spot to be in. Out of position. Probably should just be folding. But it's a pretty small 3 bet. Only $35 more. And we're just going to evaluate on a flop. I make the call. And the flop heads up comes 863 Rainbow. Top pair is just fine, I guess. I don't really love this spot, so I check. He bets $60, and once again, I'm in between a rock and a hard place. We didn't play 8-9 suited to full top pair, but him only having $140 behind is just not great. So calling seems dumb. Um, jamming also seems like a little bit of an overplay of top pair. And folding, just like, why are we folding top pair if we are playing this hand? 
Um, all three decisions don't feel great, but I just put in the jam to increase the variance, protect my pair, and I just know that if he calls, I'm only getting called by better. When I put in the jam, he calls pretty quickly, so really not loving it. But we're off to a run out. The turn is the king of spades, and the river is a miracle eight. Let's go. We show our trips, and he mucks. Um, later, he tells us that he had pocket queens. Just be in a luck box once again. All right, this time we actually pick up a hand with pocket queens in the big blind. There's an only gun open to 12. The cutoff makes the call, and here in the big blind out of position, perfect spot to put in that three bet against two players and an only gun open. I three bet to $60, and now action onto the only gun player who thinks about it and puts in the four bet to $130. Min clicked the 4-bet basically, and he has exactly about $130 behind, so um, this is going to be an easy spot to just put in the 5-bet jam after facing a min 4-bet. No need to really play this tricky and flat call out of position, so when the cutoff folds, I just rip it all in there. Now this player tanks for a long, long time and ends up folding, which I didn't understand. He said he folded ace-king, so... Uh, I'm not sure if I can agree with that play, but uh, I guess I'll take down the money preflop, Nate. Here's an update with our chip stack right now. We've been winning a lot of small pots and slowly chipping up. Following the pocket queen's hand, we pick up another pair, pocket eight on the button, five handed. I open things up to $12 and the small blind three bets to 50. Big blind folds back onto me. He's been three betting me a lot so far in this session, mainly because, well, I do open pretty wide. But uh, with pocket eights, this is obviously a very easy defend with a actual hand. So we're going to a flop heads up. Flop is king, king, eight, two hearts. Thank God. What a flop for us. He checks to us surprisingly. And here flopping in boats. Um, let's just slow play this in position. Hopefully he can fire away and we can get two streets of value. So I check it back. Turn comes the seven of diamonds. Brings in that backdoor flush draw. And here he fires out for $65. Hoping he's on a draw, hoping he's maybe even slow playing king himself, I'm not entirely sure, but never raising here to scare him off, I make the call. The river comes the 10 of spades, board a little bit more connected, and now he fires out $90 with 250-ish dollars behind. Sometimes I'm losing to pocket 10s here, which would be pretty gross, but after flopping a boat, there is no way to go about this other than going for max value. We rip it in for 340 ish dollars total. He tanks for quite some time. He says he feels pretty gross about this, but ultimately puts in a chip for a call. We show our hand and we're good. He shows us ace king, so uh, that's definitely quite the cooler flop there. Lucky for us to have the chips come our way. Thanks. A little step up from pocket eights, we pick up nines in the big blind playing six handed. There's an under the gun open to $12, the cutoff makes the call, and here the same player from last hand under the gun, I know he has a pretty tight opening range here, so I decided to flat and not three bet. Going to a flop three ways, which comes queen nine five rainbow. We just keep flopping sets here, it's amazing. I check here with middle set, under the gun throws out the C bet to $20. The other player folds, and considering that I know he has a pretty strong range here, opening under the gun, let's hope he connected in one way or another, some sort of ace-queen hand. I put in the raise to $75, a little bit on the larger side considering we're out of position, but let's go for stacks here. After this raise, he doesn't take too long before making the call, and we're going to a turn. Turn comes the deuce of hearts, brings in that backdoor flush draw, but, you know, hearts really aren't concerning here given the action. He has about 250-ish dollars left in the stack. No real sizings make sense besides one called the all-in button. So let's rip it in and potentially just rep a draw of some sort. Uh, definitely going to be jamming with a lot of my combo draws as well, so pocket nines here definitely going for all of it. He tanks, and he says that this is such a sick spot but at the end of the day, ends up putting in the call. I show my set already, considering that I'm always good here. We're off to a river which comes a king. Not good for us, as he rolls over pocket kings. 
What a river for us. Nice hand, Nate. Uh, nice for you to at least get some of your chips back after the pocket eights and ace king cooler. Why do you have more than I thought that you had? Damn it. That's why I was like, why are you over that I was thinking 200, not 250. Another step up from nines, we pick up jacks from the plus one position. There's an unlegun limp, and I raise it up to $15. The cutoff, player to my left, once again, three bets us to $45, and once again, it folds to me. I think this is like the third hand in a row that he's three bet or something, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely not going to be folding pocket jacks here, so I defend and make the call. Flop comes king, deuce, seven, two diamonds. I check, and he throws out a bet of $30. I can't be folding just yet with jacks. Um, certainly can be ahead. Can't be afraid of just the one over card. I defend once and evaluate a run out. Turn comes another seven. I check. Um, he shouldn't have too many sevens in his three betting range, but uh, he ends up checking it back. So let's hopefully try to get the showdown. The river is the five of diamonds. And once again, like I said, trying to get the showdown. We check. He throws out another bet of $65. And this just doesn't seem like a bluff here. I don't really think I can call river bets here in this spot, so um, I elect to make the fold button, which is pretty rare for us. I fold, show him my hand, and he was nice enough to show us ace-king. So, looks like he's just picking up ace-king left and right. Last notable hand of the session, picking up pocket sevens in the big blind. There are three whole limpers to me, and out of position with a pretty medium pair. Pretty good hand to just try to isolate and get this heads up. So I raised to $25 over the three limpers, and little did you know, action ensues, all of the limpers call. So four ways to the flop with 100 in the middle. Flop is four, five, five, two diamonds. Well, I mean, pocket sevens here, multi-way, you really can't ask for a much better flop than flopping an overpair. So when it checks to me, I put in that C-bet to $75, going to be sizing up here for sure. The early position limper makes the call for 75 and now the small blind puts in the all-in jam, but it's a small amount of $122. Um, this is going to be an easy call for the both of us since the action's closed, no one can raise, and obviously no one's going to be folding for $50 more. So I call, and the early position player calls, who's also pretty short. Early position has about $100 behind. Off to a turn, which is an 8. Um, out of position, 100 bucks behind, uh, potentially he can have some 8s in that range, potentially just some flush draws. Um, we do improve to a gutter, but with our 7s, we're just going to go with it. No need to put ourselves in a tough decision, let's just rip it in. I jam 100, he makes the call, off to a river, 3 ways, all in. River is a 6, so we get there with our gutter, we get there with our straight. We show our hands, and the early position player has pocket 10 somehow? And even worse, the small line had 9-5 off suits for flopped trips. How the hell did we end up winning with the worst hand on the flop? I have no idea, but always beware of that runner runner. Session's over. Not a bad time today. It went pretty smoothly overall. Uh, a few suckouts, um, both by me and against me. So that's always fun. But uh, end of the day, good session. I was in for 1,800 out for the amount here in five hours played. So pretty solid day. A solid welcome back. Um, I always have a really good time at 1-3. I was I looked at the two five tables. Wasn't for me. And 1-3 is just like. Just like a, there's just, I don't know, something about 1 3, it's so comfortable, I love it. And uh, for one reason or another, I do fairly well. So today was uh, one of those days where I did well. So um, that's it, that's, that's, that's the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Leave a like if you made it this far. It's always much appreciated. I can't stop asking for likes. But besides that, I will see you guys in the next video. Um, we'll be doing some fun things moving forward. And thanks for all the support. As always, it's getting pretty cold here in Massachusetts or whatever, New England. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.